Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Think Future. My name is Chris Kalabukas, and once again, we're coming at you live from deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking innovation startups, the future. Not necessarily those, and not necessarily in that order. If you're watching on YouTube, smack that subscribe button and hit that bell so you can be notified when a new show comes online. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast service, please subscribe and please drop a note on Apple Podcasts. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now, I'm really tired. I'm really tired with the content that we see out there. I mean, almost all the content that we see out there are sales messages, right? There's hardly any ever, ever any real content. Even when you read Medium, even when you read Substack, even when you read a lot of stuff that's supposed to be just content, content that's created for people, a lot of it is sales messages. And a lot of times, and even if it's not a sales message, even if you are trying to create real content, let's say you're a writer, Let's say you're an author and you want to write essays. You want to write essays, you want to write short stories, you want to write fiction, small, flash fiction, whatever. You want to write stuff for the internet. Create stuff for the internet. Create creative stuff for the internet. So you write something for human beings to read. You write it, you post it, and nobody sees it. Why doesn't anybody see it? I'll tell you why nobody sees it. Because you didn't bow down to the engines. So you have to understand that between you, between your content and your readers is the engine, the search engine. The only way your reader is going to find you or your content is if they go through the engine. And the, the engine decides that your content isn't interesting enough for the for the for the reader then the reader will never see your content so here you are mr author ms author writer extraordinaire writing your heart out creating this amazing piece of work you love this work people have read this work your editors have read this work your friends have read this work they love this work you post it online and what do you get? Crickets. And why do you get crickets? Well, you, you wrote this for your readers. You wrote this for other human beings to read. But in between, there's the engine. So you say to yourself, okay, fine. I understand. I can either try to communicate directly with these people, which costs an arm and leg. It's almost impossible to build the audience that way. Or I can rewrite my work for humans and machines. So I go back to the drawing board, Mr. Ms. Creator, and I rewrite everything, making sure it's SEO friendly and it has all the right keywords in it so that the engines, the arbiters of content on the internet, decide to show my content to the reader. Now, of course, I can't write really good content for the reader if I'm writing really good content for the search engine because those are completely different audiences. Do you write for the search engine or do you write for the reader? So you have to create some kind of content that works for both but doesn't really work really well for either. And you hope that you've hit the right notes so that the search engine will leak out little bits of your content to the people who want to read it. So this is really hard. This is really hard. So what happens? We now have AI article writers. We have Jasper.ai and a whole bunch of others that use AI, they use open AI to write articles to write fiction. That's right. That's right, folks. There are systems out there that write fiction. Just like Dali and Crayon can do imagery, there are systems out there that can write fiction. All you have to do is specify a few bits of information and boom, it can write a story for you. And believe it or not, it can write a story that's perfect for the search engine because it knows exactly what the search engine is looking for. So you throw in a few 
bits of information, it generates a picture-perfect search engine article, which may or may not be written for humans. It's more, it's written for search engines for sure, but it can also be written for humans. So let's say it has a little bit of humanity written into it. So we're going to have content being created by machines. And in a recent article, they said that by 2026, this is not that far out, folks. This is four years from now. Four years from now, 90% of the content on the internet will be written by AI. So when I read that, I thought to myself, well, this is funny because we've got AI as the gatekeeper, the search engines, and then we have the content written by AI. Content, content, content written by, content written by AI. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot where my user was, or my user's over here, that's right. So we got the author writing, we have, to, we have the search engine in the middle, we have the content writer, we have the AI writing content, we have the content writer writing content. They're both writing content for the search engines because none of them, they, they both want to get through this wall so they can get to the reader. And of course the AI is writing for the AI. So AI is writing for AI. So AI is writing content for its, for another AI. And you've got write, authors writing content for humans, but it never gets through the middle because it's almost impossible to get through the middle because the search engine is going to stop it because it doesn't proper SEO. So we're going to have an internet full of AI generated content and AI generated algorithms. And where's the humans in all this? You know, it's like the dead internet theory. Eventually, we're just going to have bots talking to bots. And where are the humans in all this? Where, when are we going to be able to talk to each other? When am I, as a human being, author, will be able to provide or do, take a story and post it somewhere and hope that someone is going to be able to see it? How do we create some new type of connection between the human at one side and a human on the other side and use the AIs instead of walls, content creation and walls to the user. How do we use the AI to facilitate those connections instead of block them? How can we create content for humans? How can AI and human beings create content for humans and bypass the filtration mechanism of the search engines so that the content that the user that the reader wants ends up in the hands of the reader whether it's generated by AI or generated by humans how do we do that because i see this dystopian future where we have AI search engines AI feeds AI content all being generated and then being fed to humans. I mean, think about it this way. Think about it this for a second. You, let's say you love music. Let's say there's a particular kind of music that you like, say country music or something like that. And there's a particular kind of music and there's a particular singer that you like and there are particular sounds in the music that you like. AI could generate ream after ream after ream after ream of music what am I saying? Reams are not music, <laughs> reams of paper. Song after song after song after song after song that appeals specifically to you, that does not appeal to anybody else, that appeals specifically to you. And it has been so refined and so designed, it's kind of like your feed right now, so refined and so designed that it plays music that speaks to you directly. No more concerts, no more bands, no more Spotify, nothing. You just have a bot that creates music for you. Would you want to live in that world? Music for you, books for you, movies for you. Do we want to live in a world where AI generates everything for humans and we don't do a damn thing, but consume, consume, consume? I don't know about you, but I don't want to live in that world. That's it for me for today. See you next time. And until then, don't forget to think future.